Hello there, brothers and sisters in Christ in Mizoram. Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because everything that we say and do is for the glory of our Heavenly Father. I bring you greetings from the International Ministerial Congress, from the IMC officers, from Ramon Ruiz, Brian Clayton and myself. It is in our hearts to be with you at this particular time of the year because you are celebrating a significant jubilee milestone. Celebrating 50 years of God's good work among you. Brothers and sisters, don't we have an enormous amount to be really grateful for? to give God thanks. And I'm sure as you've come together now from near and far with open doors to all brothers and sisters in Christ, is that together in unison, your songs of praise, your right hand of fellowship, your hearts of thanksgiving, truly give God the glory. I remember when I was among you all in 2017. What a wonderful time of fellowship. What a wonderful time of building and encouraging and strengthening one another as we fix our eyes on Jesus, as we honour him, as we commit our lives to glorify God in word or deed. I wish I could be with you today, celebrating, praying, singing, immersed in fellowship, and grateful for all God's good work. But time and distance and circumstance don't allow it. But the IMC, we are talking about being with you sometime next year. We do plan to meet, we do plan to travel, and we ask you to join us in prayer as we commit together in prayer, asking God to open those doors and windows of opportunity so that we can share table, break bread, rejoice in prayer and song, and be immersed in upbuilding the ties that bind. I'm really encouraged when I read the scriptures, and I wish I could be with you at this time to simply open the text and read and seek to understand prayerfully. When Jesus began his ministry, the, the disciple, in a, in a, by extension, Luke, records Jesus' beginning of ministry. And he chose from the book of Isaiah to read. So he opens a scroll, as it was his custom on the Sabbath in, in Nazareth. That's where he grew up. That's where he worked as a young man for his dad as a carpenter. And just at the beginning of his ministry, at about 30 years of age, we read in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, Jesus took the scroll from Isaiah and said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And if you read the text, everybody marvelled at the beautiful words that came from his mouth. And then Jesus looks and he says to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. I encourage you to read the rest of the chapter, because the rest of the chapter suddenly brings us to a sudden twist. But we won't go in there today. But what Jesus is talking about is this acceptable year of the Lord's favour, this liberty for the captives, this freedom and release that Jesus is talking about from sin, from blindness, from enslavement. And celebrating 50 years is significant. Not too many married couples reach the 50-year milestone. My parents certainly did, and I hope Rebecca, my wife, and I reach that milestone as well. Some people are fortunate to reach their 60th wedding anniversary. But 50 is significant because in the life and times of ancient Israel, the 50th year, the Jubilee year, was a year of release. As you've probably talked about already, what did that year of release mean? For Because of sinfulness, brokenness, bad debt, bad decisions, people would find themselves in a very difficult financial position. And many times they would be enslaved or indentured to work off their debt. And families could end up in poverty because one son or grandson wasted the family's entire wealth and ancient Israelite economy was tied to the land. But every 50 years, borders of land and property returned to the original family owners. And that broke the debt cycle in ancient Israel. And the spiritual principle applies to us today. 
as we celebrate 50 years, as we look back on the calling of Christ in our lives and the decades and decades of the investment of the Son of God through the prompting and encouraging and the development as we mature in Christ, that now we come to this milestone that we are committed to be the grace and truth of Jesus Christ. So if someone has sinned against us, now is the time to forgive. If we have challenges within the faith community, now is the time to reconcile, to let go old ways, old things that have stopped us from reconciliation. Because what God is doing in Christ is reconciling the whole world to himself. And the way he did that was through the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world, where Christ died while I was still a sinner. But his shed blood is a complete atonement for my sins, our sins, your sins, the sins of the world. And as soon as we repent and say, Father, forgive us, we're stepping into the realm of reconciliation. And God, according to Apostle Paul in the, in the book of Corinthians, in his letters, tells us that God has entrusted to us the message of reconciliation. So if we go and offer our gift to God, and Jesus said, if you have something against your brother, go to your brother, sort it out first, and then come and offer your gift. And that's not something that I've been meditating on, because outside the body of Christ, everybody looks after self. And so we become narcissistic, self-oriented with my truth as opposed to God's universal truth. But when we are called by the Father, and Jesus Christ chooses us in his body, and we respond by faith, then truth becomes the written word of God and personified in Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I am the truth. I am the way. I am the life. And when John the Apostle is introducing us to Jesus, he tells us that from him we've received Grace upon grace, absolute unmerited favour. John tells us that the law came through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. The law is holy, righteous, true and just. But brothers and sisters, the law can't save us. The law is God-given, God-inspired. But what the law does is condemns us to death. But by the spirit of the law, we are extended grace, forgiveness on repentance. And out of the waters of baptism, we become a new creation in Christ. And so our debt and our death penalty was completely absolved in Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And so as we celebrate at this time of the year, we rejoice at the grace and truth in Jesus Christ, at his willingness right from the very beginning to stand in our place because the wrath of God had to be executed. The judgment of God needs to be sentenced and all of us fall short. I'm grateful that as a community, as a part of the International Ministerial Congress, we are growing in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. That's Peter's words when he was an old man. He knew he was about to die and he said, there's one thing I want to leave you before I go. Grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. I look forward to God willing be with you next year. And I pray that interim that God would protect us, encourage us, counsel us, guide us, help us to die daily to sin and live daily to Christ, to love one another, to celebrate and rejoice at the victory that we have in Christ. So on behalf of the International Ministerial Congress of the Church of God's Seventh Day, I bring you greetings from our brothers and sisters around the world and certainly pray for God's blessing to be with you at this time. So in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm your brother, John Classic. <laughs>